I would like to get more on the listing side of uh, listing. So that's that's where my, what my goal is to do more listing as well as investing. Okay, great deal. Have you ever heard of uh, Jim Rom? No. All right, great, great, perfect. Jim Rom is a very he's a professional growth and development person. And he talk about um, personal growth and development as well. He's passed now, God bless his soul. But um, he's one of my mentors. I look as a mentor because I read and listen to everything he say. And mm -hmm. now you got Darren Hardy. You ever heard of Darren Hardy? No. So he's the author of the power compound effect, the, the compound effect. Um, I buy all his educational sources and tools because he teach you how to be an entrepreneur. He teach you how to uh, be productive. And then you got Dean Garzioski. Have you ever heard of him? No, I haven't. All right, cool. Dean Garzioski is another guy that's all about productivity, saying that, hey, you got so many hours in a day. The rich got so many hours in a day. The poor got so many hours a day. It's not about you got so much to do. It's about what you're doing with your time. All right. So the reason why I brought those three people together, because those are all mentors I look at that I glean from on how to be more productive, how to be a better entrepreneur. And then if you're in real estate, you cannot be in real estate. You can you can be. But uh, Jim Rum says, do not be a real estate agent if you're not investing in real estate. Real estate agents make money with a transaction. But if you invest into real estate, you make money over and over again. Get where I'm coming from? Oh, yes. So he said, that how can you sell something you don't believe in? If you don't buy it, you don't believe in it. If you're just selling it, you're not you're you're you're, you're just doing a transaction. But if you really believe in something, you should be buying into what you believe in. That make makes sense. sense. Uh huh. Now you understand what the person is going through that you're actually helping. You put yourself in their shoes and you are a believer just like they're a believer and you're practicing what you preach. So uh, with that being said, I mean, I'm, I'm so I'm, I'm glad. OK, that's enough of that preaching. So <laughs> this is the part. OK, so we do wholesaling. Right. And I have a friend I really want to tell Twan to get on this call. He's a real estate agent as well. Um, and real estate agents have uh, advantage. The one advantage you all have is you have something called an MLS system, right? Right. Not only is that MLS system uh, is an advantage for you all, is because also because you get real time comps. Whereas an investor, we buy prop springs, we buy um, prop spring, we buy by deal automator, deal evaluator. Uh, we got research deep re, uh, default research we got so many softwares that we got to pay extra money for which you pay extra money for be a part of mls system correct correct all right so with that being said we yeah your information is probably more current but we get some real good real good information that's pretty much to the teeth that we can use to our advantage all right now like you said as a real estate agent you got one you got one thing holding up you got to expose to the the, the 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 seller or the buyer that you're an agent before you start I mean before you start talking to them as an investor correct correct and you can not do that but if you don't then it's not considered morally correct 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 all right so I went to real estate school and, <laughs> I, and I understand the concept and that's why I did not want to become a real estate agent at that moment I am going to become a real estate agent because if I get up to 50 houses why do I want to sell let somebody else sell my houses for me Exactly. <laughs> I might as well sell my own. But right now, in the meantime, let me get as many properties as possible so that when I decide to release them, then I can make another pay, uh, make another salary, make another income and make money again. All right. Now, with, you, with that being said, I like working with real estate agents that actually work. Right. Not ones that say, here go an MLS system. Oh, I'm gonna send you some 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 of the ones you told me to look at. You let pick it out and let me know, right? Mm -hmm. Are you one of those agents? Oh no! Agent. Oh no! Okay. Uh -oh. <laughs> <laughs> now, um, with being with, with that part, it's funny because I mean, like, I, I literally feel like I'd be training a real estate agent, and then it'd be like, dude, you tell them you got ten years of, of experience, you're a broker, and I'm literally have to tell you step by step how to work with me. You know, that's 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 awkward. 
<laughs> is offered. So I, I, again, I applaud you for joining an investor group and trying to find out a little bit more about the business so that you could be able to help yourself and help others. Um, so what you, are you looking to buy and hold? Are you looking to fix and flip? Or are you looking to what? Uh, I'm looking to fix and flip. Um, okay. As far as buy and hold, I would like to buy multifamily units and hold those. But other, uh, I've, I've seen a lot of homes that could be fixed up and flipped. Okay, so what's holding you back from doing that? Well, what's holding me back from doing that is the fact that I don't understand it. Okay. So I don't want to get into something that I really don't understand. Okay. Um, and in the Atlanta area, you do you you have a broker, right? Yes. Do your broker invest? He uh, he's at my broker is actually an instructor. He owns his own school as well as his brokerage. He has done an in, uh, investment in the past. He has not done anything since. And that's also a, a course that he's probably looking at teaching as well. Eventually, once he get the time to do that. OK, absolutely. Absolutely. All right. The reason why I asked you that, because in, in this business, I mean, I can tell you anything and I can I can I can tell you how to do anything. But it's only half the battle. Um, once you start working real estate investing um, and you start doing the business, that's when you learn as you go. You're never going to not never, but you're not going to know. You're not going to know much when you start. Right. And if you have a mentor, they know a lot more because of their experience and because of situations and because of um, whatever studies they have. Um, myself, personally, I invested over you know, a lot of money. Yes, let's say that. I don't even know that you're saying the number. But I invested a lot of money. I didn't follow Dan Merrill. I didn't follow Lee Honor. I didn't follow Kobe Sperber. And I already told you three of my mentors just for professional, personal growth and development, right? So I spent a lot of money to make sure I'm not just out here winging it. <laughs> and I don't want to put myself in a situation uh, when investing that I got to know everything. If somebody else knows something, why do I have to know everything? I can learn from that person and I can ask that question and I can move farther, faster. And when I get in a situation now, I will tell you this. I love to tell folks to start off with wholesaling. And I, I, I advise folks to start off with wholesaling because that's a way to get a transaction and get some money. Right. Also, while you're building your transactions and getting some money, um, I like to refer to that as the Girl Scout cookies. And the Boy Scout popcorn, the Girl Scout never want to sell you one box of cookies. And the boys don't ever want to sell you one can or one bag or anything of popcorn. They all they want to sell you many, right? They don't want one. They want many. So with wholesaling, it's a door knocker. I'm knocking on your door. I'm asking you, do you want to? <laughs> yeah, yeah, dumb lap. Yep, I heard him too. All right. But... Uh, <laughs> I knock on the door and I'm asking you, hey, do you want to buy more houses? Or you want to sell more houses? All right. Do you want more houses? That's the first. That's just an opener because the person may say, I don't want to sell right now. Right now, I mean, I got room for talking. If you don't want to say I want to sell it at all, that's a different story. But you say it right now. So when you say right now, that means the thought is in your head, but you don't know if you want to do it. And you may not want to wholesale it because it's like you said, dirt cheap. I'm asking for a low ball price, all cash. I'm throwing this money at you. So that's a door knocker. That's a door knocker. You just got that person to have a conversation with you. When you have that conversation with that person, you can find out more of their issues and more of their problems to better help them. Not help you. It's never about you. It's always about the person that you have on the phone with you, that you have in your face, that you're talking to. You're wanting to find out what exactly do they need so you can help them with their needs more than you have them with their wants. You got what I'm coming from, Ms. Pearl? Yes, uh-huh. All right. So after you get into the business of this, um, if you find somebody that got a real problem, like when my first one of my first rental properties I bought, the guy was um he, uh, unfortunately he was sprung out on crack, you know, he was on on drugs. Um and his mom and dad passed and basically he was living in a house and wasn't paying any rent. I mean I'm paying any taxes, wasn't doing anything. He rented the house out. He moved out the house. He rented the house out to another person and the person was getting the letters in the mail saying your house is up for tax lien. 
Now, this person got a problem. They don't have the money because of their extracurriculum activities that's not productive. They're burning up their money. They don't have any money. So they don't have the money to pay off the house taxes. So the person that was living in the house contact my mom and said, hey, buy this house because he's going to lose it. My mom, I was overseas with the military, active duty, and my mom said, baby, you got opportunity. And she gave me the opportunity, and she passed it on to me, and I, and I literally gave her power attorney to go ahead and buy the house and get everything. And I bought that house for six, $7,000, and he was behind on taxes about $3,000, and he had to do a probate, which cost about $1,500. So he pocketed probably around about maybe – Maybe $1,200. $1, That's all he piked about $1,200 at the most. But he had a problem. So that was like, I could have wholesaled that property to somebody else for a lot more, but I still have that property today. And that happened in 2010 uh, when I got my first rental, 2009, 2010 at that time, when I first got my first rental property. And that situation came about just like that. Now, let me talk about a wholesale. I got a wholesale deal only because I kept posting stuff on the Facebook, Instagram, and everything. Say, hey, I'm in the real estate. I like real estate. Anybody got anything you want to sell? Anybody got a problem? Anybody got this? Blah, 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 blah. All of a sudden, my classmate calls me up and says, hey, again, this another house is behind on taxes. He's behind on child support. And then he was like, hey, um, man, I trust you. Will you buy this house from me? The house had a hole in the roof. The brick beans were broke at the bottom, um, trashed up, everything. I literally sold the house the same day I got it. I videotaped the house. I recorded the I video recorded the house on my phone. And then I uh, did a photo pictures of it. And then I just shout out to many buyers that I already had in my phone. And I sold the house the same night, right then and there. So again, I found somebody with a problem that needed the back taxes uh, uh, set up. They needed their um, child support caught up. And I think he had some other tax problems too. But nonetheless, the amount of money I sold it for him, he was happy because now he had no problem. He We eliminated that problem. And then 10 years, like three years down the road, he came back saying he wanted to buy the house back. Because <laughs> his money is better. He got the fund, his mom and dad home that they passed and they left him. And now he wanted it back. And we willing to sell it back to him. But I sold it to somebody that he got to negotiate with them. <laughs> Not me. <laughs> So, Pearl, do you see how even though I may came up with a lowball offer to these people, it still was something that they needed? Oh, yes. And deals like that as real estate agents, we can do as long as they are the ones who want to ha have that deal handed, handled that way. Because we can say we can list your property, get the full amount for it. But if they are adamant about getting whatever they can, then, you know, we just make sure that they sign that on the dotted line and we have a paper trail stating that. Absolutely. Absolutely. So, what, what, I mean, that's how you get the deals. Then those are the best ones to go for, Ms. Pearl, if, if that's the situation that you're in right now as a real estate agent, right? right. And as a constructor, go for the low-hanging fruits. Maybe they're not in a neighborhood you want. Maybe you don't have to do fix and flip. Maybe you do a fix and keep, which is burr. You heard of burr before, right? Yes. All right. Maybe that's what I do. And that's what I started off with. I started off with burning all my properties. And once I got to a certain number of that, I replaced my salary. Then I started doing fix and flips. I started doing creative financing. I started doing pretty house deals. I started doing um, seller wrap deals. I started doing all this creative stuff after I replaced my salary. So now I have enough income that I don't have to work for anybody if I don't want to, because the money from my real estate investment, my buy and hold can take care of me. And that's the first thing I try. Well, one, I try to tell everybody, any money you invest in real estate, get your money back first on wholesaling. Once you get your money back, you got a 100% return on your investment. After you get that 100% return on your investments, then you try to replace your salary. And that's where I sit down with you. We do a financial needs analysis. We sit down, we go step by step on what it takes for you to get to the income you want and why. And once you get to that point, then we, uh, we start aiming and knocking out the uh, course of action so that you can get on path. And then we do gauge check. We gauge check to see how far you are, how well you are, how close you are. And that's 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 how I coach real estate. And that's how I coach Joe. Coach Joe coach a little different, but I coach it that way because I, you know, I'm I'm more I'm goal oriented. I like to set goals. Coach Joe, I don't know if he's on the call. Coach, you on the call? He's in Chicago looking at like six properties right now. He made it, oh, he on the call. 
So he unmuted him. Yeah, yeah, I'm I'm here, coach. Yeah, coach. Man, you hey, chime in, man. I'm talking to Pearl having a conversation. I hope my internet not going in and out. Hey, yes, I am here. Hey, hey, uh, I, I should have just been quiet just to see what you're gonna say about me. Hey, that's what I should have done. Hey, that's <laughs> that's what I should have done. So, Miss Pearl, I'll tell you this. Hey, hey, I don't I don't trust coach like that. So I should have been quiet just to see what he's gonna say about me. <laughs> But but no, in, in all seriousness, uh, no. Co- coach is a brother uh, from another mother for sure. No, I, I'm I'm just re- really excited to hear you know that you're very enthused and engaged in you know becoming a real estate investor and you're starting to invest in your education to take the next steps. And as Coach uh, shared with you, yes, I, me personally, I started out doing fix and flips. And, uh, you, you know, then, you know, meeting people like coach and, and other investors and just watching how, you know, um, you know, just developing a plan of, you know, hey, how I wanted to grow my wealth. You know, I, I learned that, hey, I had to start continuing to diversify my uh, portfolio. So coach would tell you in, in any other, you, you know, anyone else that follows us, you know, hey, I love doing fix and flips. And then from fix and flips. Hey, you know, I transitioned over into the quote unquote free house, free house hack. So uh, I love creative financing. And whenever I say free house hacks, I truly mean free house hacks to where people who are willing to, you know, basically sign over the deed to their property to me, sign over the deed to their property to me for, for, for no money. For no money. Some cases they will get a little bit of money. In some cases, they don't get anything. You know, they just sign it over. And, and, and we're speaking about homes that uh, I say this respectfully. I don't know you, but hey, look, I feel like you would live in these homes because I definitely would live in these homes, you, you know, in good neighborhoods, uh, you know, three or four uh, bedrooms, two um, two car garages, you know, the works. So, you know, that, that's that's what I specialize in fix and flips, uh, you, you know, creative financing and, and of course, you know, uh, education, you know, giving back to to those that are, you know, looking to start their investing careers. Uh, Co- Coach mentioned that I'm in Chicago right now. Yes, I'm here in Chicago. Uh, I live in Texas. But, you, you know, as an investor, if you do this full time, you'll learn that you actually have to spread your wings and, you, you know, to touch multiple different areas simply because sometimes, the market that you live in is not producing opportunities for you. So sometimes you have to step out and go, go seek and find those opportunities. And Chicago has done so here for me. Uh, I put uh, actually eight properties, you you know, eight properties here. Uh, You you know, so far one of them, I just chunked up and said, Nope, I'm not interested. You know, go ahead and cancel that contract. So, you know, I, I submitted my offer sight unseen, you know, only the photos and so because I needed to lock up those assets and I said, hey, you know what, if I'm out a couple hundred dollars on EMDs, you know, to doing my inspection period. Hey, look, that's my time to get up there, take a look, see if it's something I want to actually purchase. So, so far, you know, two really good, solid ones that we are taking, Coach. And out of those two, uh, two that we're taking, you, you know, we're looking at making, you know, about fifty five thousand uh, dollars per transaction. You know, and that's on a fix and flip. So, um, uh, so I'm excited about that, you know, and, and Hey, coach mentioned the burr strategy. So, uh, we, we're taking a look at a couple more properties tomorrow that we're, uh, ho- hopes that, you know, we can actually do the burr strategy on, but it's just the, it, the market is there, Pearl, the uh, Miss Pearl, the opportunity is there. It's just believing in yourself and getting with the right auxiliary to, to help you spread your wings, you know, the right auxiliaries, those that are non-biased, uh, that are, you know, truly genuine and care about the success, uh, you, you know, that you're seeking and Hey, and, and, and you'll get it. You will get it. You will get it. I know that was a mouthful coach. You probably wasn't uh, looking for me to, to, to speak that much or share that much, but Hey, I did it anyway. You know, I, I say I, I want to come in and Hey, it, and still, Two extra minutes from Coach T. <laughs> Two extra minutes from Coach T. First of all, I didn't even know my internet gonna work in this house. So, <laughs> hey, 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 that's what happens when you live in the mansions, man. Get you a hey, small man. little, get you a small little eight hundred square foot like the rest of us. 
Well, hey, hopefully the people come tomorrow, but I talked to the neighbor in the street, man, and she said that the, the internet service is horrible here. So I'm using AT&T on my cell phone and, and I can't use my, I ain't want to tether because I knew it was be a problem. But no, nah, thank you for, for filling, filling her, uh, Ms. Pearl in on that and um, letting her know that. Ms. Pearl, you have any questions so far? No, none at the moment. I mean, I mean, you come on, you gave me a call but, to know some stuff. You're an instructor. I know you got something. But I do like that title, though, retire in less than 10 years. Well, and honestly, <laughs> Pearl, that, that's for a lazy person like myself, right? That's honestly, you retire in five years if you do this business correctly. And I promise you, I, I promise you, when I first started, like, taking this business for real, I got a real estate agent. I told her I want five houses in five <laughs> years, a house a year. When I and when I say I came across five houses in that first year that I could have bought and been done, I was just scared. I was scared because I'm like, hold on, moving too fast. This is too much. No, I can't do it. Right. But that, that I blew past my numbers. I blew past my numbers. Within two years, I had over, over, over five houses in two years. And I could have had so many more. Um, but I did wholesale a couple. I did get a couple of free houses, like Coach said, uh, where I just gave $10 for Ernest the money. And that was it. That's it. So it was a free house. I gave $10 for Ernest money. And it still applied to the closing. <laughs> so I didn't lose any money. It was a free house. Um, and, and yeah, that, so Miss Pearl, you, yeah. What other question? You got I me mean, out. You can retire in five years. I put 10 because some folks don't think it's realistic. And I know that most folks got a fear of success and they got a fear of failure. And that's the biggest thing I noticed um, since we've been coaching people on real estate investing. They have a fear of doing something right over and over again, or they have a fear of not doing it right the first time and they never get past that. So they never get started. They just get in and they just a learner. Yep, yep. Coach, uh, yep. how long have you been uh, investing? Since 2004. 2004. And, and what's the value of your uh, portfolio? Oh, man, come on now. <laughs> <laughs> hey, talk one, to me. Uh, hey, hey one, one million plus. I just say that. <laughs> well, well, I mean, that's just, you, you know, so so in, in under 20 years, you've been able to, you know, build a portfolio that's, that's valued over a million dollars. Yep. Those of us that, you know, work, you, you know, a traditional nine to five. Hey, look, we can't save up into our IRA 401k, you know, retirement a million dollars in, in, in 18 years. We can't do it. We can't do it. So, man, hey, I commend you for, you, you know, that that accommodation. Well, I'm sorry, not accommodation. I commend you for that achievement and, you, you know, as well as, you know, continued success, man. So so that, that's awesome. I it add to awesome. The, you know, so you could share that, you know, with, with us, man. I know you did. I know why you do it. You trying to show you folks that you can't save, you can't save to a million dollars, but you can invest to one. I got you. You, you sure can. You sure <laughs> can, man. You sure can. And and hey, and, and then too, I like to say, look, hey, I, I have conversations with a millionaire every single day. So hey, I, I really like to say that, coach. You know, hey, 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 I'm more proud of that than you even achieving the number. Hey, I'm selfish over here, man. Well, look here, look here. We gotta write that book when. When millionaire meets thousand there, you know what I'm saying? That book, we still gotta write that book. I, I'm still on it. Hey, 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 absolutely, absolutely. Hey, hey, well, however I can contribute to the thousand there portion, man. You make sure. Oh! You, <laughs> hey, don't, don't do it. Don't do it. <laughs> you make sure you let me know. I'm the thousand there. You <laughs> hey, hey, look, the world just heard it. The world just heard it. Ah, hey, 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 I said when I met you, I met you when I met you. <laughs> now, I wasn't no millionaire then, <laughs> hey, but man. look, now, Miss Pearl, I mean, we 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 go back and forth like that because we like to keep it friendly and we like to keep it fun. But, um, in all honesty, um, the goal is that help folks to have an exit strategy so they won't get done. Oh, they will continue to get done like you got done, right? You worked the job, you was committed, and then the job let you go, right. All right. Um, I talked to one of my soldiers the other day. He's an ADOS soldier. That's a that's a reservist on active duty, uh, temporary on active duty. He told me that he's a he, he's got his master's degree. He's got an MBA degree. He got two masters. Um, he's I mean a very professional guy. He has turned a business full circle around. Uh, working for transportation in California and working at other places as an IT person. And he said, I've done so many nice things, sir. But all of a sudden, 
they let me go. After we get them so far, they let me go. And I just don't understand how they can do that. I see why people are not loyal to a job anymore. I see why folks get disgruntled with the system now. And I like to share his story because that's the type of stuff that I don't want to happen to people I know and that I come across and that I want to meet with so that you can have you a, a system on the side that you don't have to worry about when that happens. When that day comes, you say, thank you. I was tired of working for you anyway. <laughs> Seriously. Yep. No, absolutely, man. Hey, hey, look, I, I've been fired from a couple of them, but it's been a, a, every, every single one, man, that never missed a heartbeat. Never missed a heartbeat. Uh, you, you know, thankful and grateful for the opportunity for me to uh, get paid training from them because that's how I view it as paid training, you know, so I can implement and duplicate the exact same things I learned for them from them on my behalf. And so every, every single time I got fired from a job, coach, my, my net worth uh, went up. Doesn't matter how much, but it went up every single time. Every Plus single right. time. Plus sign. Pump, 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 pump it up. Every single time. So, so, <laughs> much, so much so, so coach, to where, hey, I'm sending photos of, of my feet kicked up to my former uh, bosses while I'm on the beach. Hey, my view looks nice. You know, looks <laughs> nice. And you know what all they say? Man, I'm happy for you. I'm happy for you. Yeah. Well, what are uh, you doing today? You know, that's what, what what you doing today. You know, my view <laughs> looks good. But you, you know, no, but but you're absolutely right, coach. It's uh you, you know, we want to have a plan in place. Uh you, you know, especially with so much uncertainty taking place right now within uh the, the country. You know, we're not sure what's going to happen. You know, we just want to be prepared, you know, in case and when something does happen. So, and, and now, you know, these types of discussions and, and, and platforms like we're having right now, this is the sole purpose of it. You know, the sole purpose of them for, as we say, each one teach one for us to get together to, you know, figure this thing out that we call life, you know, learn from each other, you know, invest and pour into each other. And let's go out and, and accomplish some amazing things. Some amazing things. Coach, I, I have, um, you know, we, we have one of the uh, mentees, you know, with us. And I literally, like, ha have the last couple of days have been sitting here drafting out, you know, their development plan to show them how to make, you know, sixty uh, to $100,000 per year. Yep. You know, and, and we're speaking about on the side. Not full to on the side. So all by finding someone, uh, you know, that they can partner and invest with, you know, uh, taking control of their actual, uh, you know, future and, you know, making some moves, making some moves. Th think about that. Coach. I mean, to, to, to be able to make, you know, anywhere from 60 to to $100,000 on the side a year. That, that's, that's, that's just un the only... I know it's other ways to do it, but for me, I love doing it through real estate. Through helping people, through helping people. Absolutely. They have a problem and you find a solution. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. I love people with, with problems. <laughs> I do. Give you a chance to be a hero. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. So, Ms. Pearl, click on my schedule and uh, everybody else on the call. I mean, um, I put the link on there, 15 minute free coaching call. Uh, to help you get a better plan and path for your future um, and, and, and set goals, right? And if you don't have anything else, you'll get your goal setting going on. But um, definitely click on the link, get on the schedule. Let's talk about 15 minutes. Let's see if uh, we can help you. Uh -oh, the power surge, USB. Uh, <laughs> I got the other computer on, man. I'm about to, about to tether. But yeah, get on my schedule, Ms. Pearl. And then anybody else on the call that have questions, um, let's open the floor up for questions real quick. Uh, I know that we're gonna probably talk about something else. And, and brother, if you want to talk about something that you had high that you want to talk about with uh, the Chicago trip so far, the actual deals you got going on, you can, or we can open the floor up for anybody to ask questions other than Ms. Pearl. I mean, Ms. Pearl, you, know, you can still ask questions, but if somebody else have questions. Yeah, no, absolutely, man. Um, you know, de definitely can do that, man. Hey, I am proud to say this here. Um, I did receive notice from, from another distressed seller who's ready to walk away from their property. Um, you, you know, and, and to give you a little background about this seller here. Uh, let's see here. I think they have like 
three months uh, before the auction, um, you know, the property is going through pre foreclosure. They just thrown their hands in and like, you know what, man, I'm sick of this and, and I'm out, you know, I'm out. You, you can have the house. OK, perfect. So I stepped right in, uh, just started those negotiations last night. So I'm excited about that opportunity to, as you say, you know, to definitely help that that uh, individual, you know, stop this foreclosure, keep it off their record, rebuild their credit. And, and my reward is, hey, I be, I'm able to inherit a property with zero dollars out of my pocket. And the house is, uh, I can't say move in ready because it needs a, uh, a real deep clean. But we're probably looking at about seven eight hundred dollars on that deep clean. We got to, uh, you know, get rid of the debris and send in the cleaners, uh, you, you know, and, and get it like a really good deep cleaning. So, so that's a blessing right there, my friend. Such Congratulations, man! House, a house for a cleaning. Just clean the house up, and you can take over. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Now, you know, all of them aren't, aren't you know, always that easy. And then I want to let you know, hey, I put in a ton of hours, a ton of time you know, seeking high and low for these types of opportunities. So I don't want you guys to think that, you know, hey, stuff is just falling out of the sky. You know, hey, I'm, I'm, I'm searching for, you know, the things that that is falling out of the sky. So, but, you know, hey, it is possible. It is possible. And just know every time you pick up a property that way, you're adding to your net worth every single time, every single time. So coach just closed the house last week. Um, you know, hey, I'm here in Chicago working on closing out uh, on some properties, uh, closing out on on a house on uh, actually what I'm closing out this week, selling, Avalanche. Uh, yep, selling two properties this week, um, buying buying one this week, uh, the house in San Antonio I was working on first uh, day on the market received a, uh, an above asking price offer which is unheard of now with these interest rates, but I received one. Um, so that property is uh, officially under contract. And so it's, you, you know, things are happening. God is still in the uh, business of blessing folks. And I don't know about you. Hey, look, I'm, I'm making sure I get, get in line. <laughs> you, yeah, you get a yes, triple sir. take. <laughs> yes, sir. Yes, sir. Hey, hey, I told you, hey, I'll be listening to you sometimes, man. <laughs> <laughs> hey, I'm not, I'm not going into full-blown sermon mode, but just know, hey, I'll be listening to you sometimes. Absolutely. Absolutely. You do. You do. Thank you, Miss. Thank you for our booking. Somebody I just booked on my calendar so we can talk and chit-chat. Thank you for that. Uh, any questions? Let's open the floor up, man. But I, congratulations on all that too, bro. But I don't want to brush past that. Definitely congratulations on all those transactions. I just don't want to uh, hold the people up and not let them ask questions either. Then we can go back to it if they don't have any questions. Oh, absolutely. Absolutely, man. You know, I'm a dog at this thing, man. You over there looking at, I know you over there looking at now. I see that, that computer flashing in front of your face. You over there clicking and looking now. Hey, I got to go. Hey, it's all about <laughs> maximizing this time, man. Hey, look, I, I, I looked at my son this uh, last week and, you know, he's 10 and, and I'm 40. I, I, I looked at him. I said, you know what, man, you know, 20 years from now, he, he's going to be in my position. You know, uh, with, you know, he's going to be spending time with his child. And, you know, my hopes is that, you know, hey, I've, you know, left him something, you know, to where instill something within his heart, with his mind to, you know, want to, you know, leave his children something uh, other than being a small brat still trying to mooch off of me 20 years from now, which, hey, that ain't happening. Nah. That is not happening, brother. That, that is you. not. No, sir. He, he showed on that one. Oh, yes, sir. Yes, the facts, 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 facts. Now, the other one, on the other hand, hey, look, look, hey, she, she can hit me up anytime. Hey, I'm done. I'm done, done, done. Oh, you, you need that? All right, done. Write the check. Where to send it? Let me cash out. <laughs> hey, but the son, nope, ain't happening. Well, that's what's up. That's what's up. Well, look, I think uh, I can't remember who that was. Uh, I didn't read the name of somebody asked a question about where can they find distressed properties at. Um, you got, I like to tell everybody and point them in the easiest direction is it's four D's, right? You have people that unfortunately have to get divorced. You have people that's always, you know, we exit this world through death. Then you have something called natural disasters. You got a lot of natural disasters that's going on. And then, dang, man, what, what's the other D? Disaster, divorce, death, divorce, death, and then um, dang, I just missed the last D. Who, hey, who we 
<laughs> drive for dollars. Drive for dollars. We can do that one. <laughs> hey. Um, oh, dog, dog, dog. Yeah. Is it distress? Do you guys go after distress as well? Well, distress, this is all distress. If anybody did, that's a distress. If anybody die, anybody get divorced, um, anybody that, um, dang, I'd have messed up on a last D. What is last D? A disaster, distress, divorce. I forgot last D. Hell, I can't remember. Yeah, <laughs> Sometimes empty nesters uh, also have the stress home where they just let go. Absolutely. Absolutely. They uh, get older. So what happens is with us as older, as, as we get older and our kids get out the house, uh, we don't get as handy no more. Right. And if we don't get as handy no more. Oh, disease, disease. That's right. Disease. Thank you, Derek. I saw you. Thank you. God, dog. And I was struggling. I was saying illness in my head, but I was like, hey, no deep. <laughs> so, so if somebody get cancer, you know what I'm saying? They know they got terminal illness and they know they finna pass. Then what they go do? Go get a reverse mortgage. So now they got a loan against the house. Now that house is distressed because the kids don't want to take over the note. They don't want the note, right? Um, and then you have some people that say, hey, I just want to let go everything and get away. So disease, uh, divorce, death, and yeah, I ain't helping me out. Okay, then fine. <laughs> you said disaster. Yes. All right. That's why I'm making sure y'all listen. A disaster. So <laughs> Hurricane Katrina. I'm from Louisiana. Hurricane Katrina happened. Uh, Lake Charles got tore by tornadoes. All those areas are distressed areas. So those are easy, low hanging fruits that nobody want. Nobody want it. So you can go after those easily and grab them up because guess what? When Hurricane Katrina happened, people got insurance money. When they got insurance money, they said they take their money and they move to Dallas. They took their money and they move to Atlanta. They took their money and they moved north. They moved away, right? So now they got the money. Now the house is there sitting there and the government not making any money off of it. So you can get that house for pennies on a dollar. Pennies on a dollar, right? Then you have, uh, you know, when you divorce to somebody, you don't want to be with them no more. You, know? <laughs> you don't want nothing. You don't remember them. You know, you, I don't know what happened in that house when you live there. So now I want to let that property go. I don't want to have nothing to do with it. You can have it for free. I don't care. <laughs> I don't care. Take it. So when you got that problem, you just have that person with a solution, right? A solution. Uh, both coaches. Oh, this message for both coaches. What are you? Oh, hold on. I can't see that that fast enough. Um, so and then um, what I said, disaster. I get. I elaborate on disaster. I elaborated on divorce. I elaborate on uh, diseases, and then uh, the other one, death. Guess what? When people take over, when let me see how to say this. The best way to say this: If I have a car and I, I, I I'm driving my car. And I paid all my hard money that I worked so hard to buy this car. When I buy this car and drive this car, I love this car. But guess what? My son don't have the same love for that car because they didn't work for it. My, my children don't have the same love for that car because they didn't put in the time in it. They didn't work all that much. So they just give it away. So if I die, they don't care about the car. Give me the money. Give me the money. So yeah, that's another area. So those are four Ds um, that can help you out. I want to say Roxanne, uh, that that's easy, 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 low hanging fruit that you can grab and you can pull and you can tug on. And then get on my schedule, Miss Roxanne, so we can talk about your plan and your path. Get on my schedule. And then I think Mr. Errol, he said this message for both coaches. What areas do you live in and do you invest in your area? So I lived in Louisiana for years. I'm active duty military. And every place I moved with the military, I bought a house. So I started investing first in Louisiana. I got several properties in Louisiana. I went to Mississippi and I was stationed there for three years. I bought a prop about two properties there now. I got a free house there and I got one that I bought for pennies on a dollar, thirty thousand dollars and a house worth seventy. The house worth seventy thousand dollars. I bought it for thirty. And I got a tenant in there playing. I had three tenants so far in that one. Um, then I moved to Virginia and I bought a $500,000 house in Virginia because it's not cheap to live in Virginia. And I got to rent it out right now. And now I'm living in North Carolina and I'm living in a house and I just closed on this house. And I'm already thinking about how can I make it a rent house. So when I move out with the military and I leave this area, I got another rental property and I'm going to put a full court, a full court basketball court in the backyard because the yard is humongous. And I like, dang it. I don't want to cut. So if I put concrete across most of the backyard, I ain't got to cut that much. 
<laughs> so um, every house I live in uh, definitely is going to be a, a investment property. And then I'm looking at properties right here in North Carolina. I'm looking for more properties in Northern Virginia. I'm looking for more properties in Mississippi. I'm looking for more properties in Dallas right now. And I will look for a property in your town if you tell me what you're looking for. <laughs> Brother, what you got? He said you want to ask both questions, uh, both of us. Thank you. Thank uh, you. Thank you. <laughs> Hey, wait, 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 wait. So he said, thanks for my service, man. He said, thank you for my service. Oh, oh, yeah, that's right, man. Hey, I I love it when you buy stuff, man. (laughs) I I love it when you do. I I don't see the question here, uh, Coach. What what was the question? Just ask him, where do we invest at and where do we live? Do we invest where we live and where do we invest? Okay, got it, got it. Okay, well, you you know, hey, I, I, you know, hey, I live a top secret life, so I can't share with you where I live, but. Uh, let's say I no, I'm just joking, man. Hey, I, I live in the state of Texas. I do invest in Texas, and honestly, I, I invest with wherever the opportunities are great at. You know, wherever the opportunities are great. So, you know, certain places I'm not interested in going, but if the opportunity is great, you know, hey, I will go and consider it. So, um, you know, I do things remotely. Um, you know, I, I've been investing in real estate for quite some time now, so I do, you know, run projects, you know, all all across the country. So not only in, in, you know, my backyard. So, you know, it is possible with the right system, the right knowledge, the right team in place, you know, where you can do multiple transactions and deals, you know, and not be there every single day. So, you know, that that is possible, but great, great question. Yep. All right, Mr. Earl, get on my schedule, man. Let's talk, let's talk, let's talk. Let's see what you're trying to do because I know that everybody don't want to tell everybody what they're trying to do on, on, on live, on YouTube and on uh, right now, but if y'all want to get my schedule, then please, please click that link, click the link, scroll up and down, click that link, get on there. Thank you, thank you so much uh, for filling out that lead generation form. Thank you for that, Miss Ma'am. Uh, so anybody else, come on, get on the schedule so we can talk and make sure we're good and make sure y'all got a plan and a path for your future uh, in real estate. Miss Pearl, you already locked in. What's that? You locked in on my schedule yet, so we can talk? No, I haven't gotten on your schedule yet. Go ahead, get on. I know you got a lot of things to do with teaching and education and other stuff. I'm over here reading about. Yeah, because I'm searching of- property as we, as I listen. <laughs> well, what kind of properties are you searching for, Miss? Yeah, I have a client who's looking for a ranch style here in Georgia. Okay, got it, got it. Okay. All right, Miss Perra, right, I'll find it for you, and then you can, I can wholesale it to you. Okay, sounds like a plan, but uh, I'll tell you, she, so she, she's it. picky. Hey, it don't matter. So we'll we'll talk. Hey, that's, hey, that's going to be your problem. I'm just going to find a house. <laughs> <laughs> I'm going to find a house and I'm going to see you. Hey, look, you got, what we're going to do is you're looking at MLS. I'm going to look off market. Okay. And then that way we find a house and boom, there you go. So that's why I got to get my schedule so we can talk about the plan and the path. Okay. We'll talk. <laughs> All right. Anybody got any questions other than the uh, ones that type them up? If you, I mean, you can unmute, go ahead and chat and say them. Cause I mean, if, let me look in the chat box. All right. I don't see no more questions. I think I answered all those. Thank you again, Derek, for man, remembering diseases, man. I, I, it, it could, I said illness in my head, but I couldn't think diseases. Yeah. I know a real estate agent like that. She doesn't send me what I'm looking for. <laughs> she sends me what she thinks I want. I, uh, I ain't going to give them that story. I don't know if you're still on the call, Miss Dear, but uh, <laughs> I fired a real estate agent this year uh, before, when I got this house. I got this house in, Chicago, I mean, in um, North Carolina where people are paying $30,000 above accent price. I got this house with appraisal price, $5,000 below the appraised price, right? In this market. And I, the real estate agent I had kept showing me all these properties I did not care about. I'm like, ma'am, all I ask you for is a good school district and I can, I can rent it out when I leave. And in three bedrooms, two baths, middle. And this woman was showing me all this stuff about shopping centers, all this stuff about golf clubs. All this. I'm like, what are you doing? <laughs> I said, who said they want this stuff? So I'm like, ah! And then she just started sending me stuff. I'm like, you know what? Don't worry about it. I no longer need your services. I really like no longer your services. I don't have time to sit down on a computer and look at all these freaking houses. I need you to send me what I ask you for. And then I get it. And then I tell you, yay or nay. That's it. And uh, that's how I am. So I'm, 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 I'm like a straight shooter. Uh, I do not. Do you know um, Cameron Dunlap, um, Joe? Uh, Cameron Dunlap? Yeah. Can't say I do. Yeah, I, I, I... 
I remember a Dunlap before, but I don't, I never looked into his training. I never looked into his program. So I really don't want to give you your information. There's a question I asked earlier. I don't want to say I know his actual stuff. I think I heard about him, but I never dug into his programs. So Cameron Dunlap, I, I don't know. I think the Dunlap I'm thinking about was Kobe Sperber. I think that's one of his guys, his, his coaches that call me all the time. I think I don't know who this guy is. I don't know who that guy is. Because I'm part of Kobe Sperber's Kobe Sperber um, program, but coaches call me all the time to try and coach me more. All right, anybody else got any questions? I don't I don't want anybody to feel like we're shunning them off or we're not here to answer their questions. Thank you. Thank you, Ms. Pearl. I see you, book. You're welcome. <laughs> Mr. Earl, what's going on? Why it's so slow to book? Come on, get on the schedule so we can talk. Ms. 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 Mr. Earl? Missy, Missy Geese? <laughs> Michelle Davis? Come on, y'all get on that schedule so we can talk. Now, I don't know what nested interior is. Come on, talk. Hey, nested interior, unmute. Tell me about that. Hey. How you doing? Good. My name is Pam. Oh, okay. You already on the schedule, do you, huh? I am. Why not? I, what happened? I am in St. Louis, Missouri. Okay, great. I know some, I got a, we got a great uh, a superstar right there working in Missouri. Oh, nice. Yeah. yeah so, and the reason I logged mm -hmm. on with my um, business zoom account so i'm an interior designer have been for about 12 years um also been in marketing for over 25 and like you said i need to plan for retirement <laughs> well miss you please get on my schedule because if you're doing interior design and, and you you already got that down we have a mentee right now that have several houses on the contract several houses on the contract and he's wholesaling them right now but if he has somebody to help him design them where we can fix and flip them, that's a possibility opportunity for us to link up on several different ways. Yeah, that would be easy for me. <laughs> <laughs> absolutely, absolutely. If you if you had every house that we can get on, well, I ain't so every, but most of our property yeah. that we can get on the contract right there in St. Louis. And Mr. Earl, get on the schedule then. See, we, <laughs> this is what it's about, guys. This is all this is about. We do, the, we do the meetup so we can meet new people. The meetup, we want to answer every question. We want to help people, but we do the meetup so we can learn more about other folks in different areas. So that as we got mentees in that areas and as we got do business in the areas, um, we have the people in place that we can keep the money in a circle. Yeah. So definitely get on my schedule then. That's awesome. I mean, Jerry, and I bet he's happy as hell right now. What Jerry at? Jerry, you happy to know that? I'm me, yeah. Jerry. Yeah. I sure am, man. I was just about to write it. <laughs> yeah, I'm out here in St. Louis too. And and he has Miss uh Miss Pam, Pam, he has several, several houses on the contract, Miss Pam. He he this this guy's a superstar. He's only 20, 24, right? Oh my goodness. Don't ask me how old I am. <laughs> Well, he's that's what I'm saying. He's hungry. He's so young. He's hungry. He's a college student. He's working a, a full time job and he joined our program. And when I tell you that this is the guy right here, keep Joe phone ringing and my phone ringing so much. He always got a deal going on. He said, coach, coach, coach. And I'm like, God, boy, you killing me. But he, he's doing it. I'm so proud of him. I'm so happy for him. So knowing that you're there and that you have that much year, uh, 17 years of experience. Uh, 12 in interior design, COVID just killed the business over the past couple of years. So I need to, you know, another stream of income. Absolutely. Absolutely. And we need to regenerate. We need to, we, we need to um, redo that business, get that business back rolling. So it's all about knowing, you know, the numbers. Um, now, Joe is the expert with that type of stuff because Joe actually, um, he fix and flips everything almost. Um, I buy and hold, so I don't have to make it too pretty. I use the same paint, the same everything in all my houses, making it simple, stupid, so I can just cash flow. I want to cash flow. I ain't got time matching paint up for every rental property. <laughs> now, nah, let's use the same paint in every house. It's on a different block. That'd be all right. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> but, but, but fix and flip is something that um, definitely is the next level for us, and that's where I'm going to start going towards now um, with the interest rates going up as it is and with the market changing as it is um pretty houses fix and flips is is something that i'm looking at something that i'm looking at with the uh, instead of burr and keeping it 
So definitely, Miss Pam, get on my schedule. Um, let's talk about how we can work together in the future, regardless if you're getting a part of the coaching program or not, uh, where I, we can link some people up in the St. Louis area. Mr. Earl is in the St. Louis area, uh, Jared in the St. Louis area, and there probably be some more people on this call that either way it goes, regardless of the fact, we want to send you some business and maybe then, you know, you'll move forward with us because you trust us. <laughs> Sounds good. Absolutely, absolutely. All right, thank you for that. Mr. Mr. Earl, what, Mick, Mike up, talk to me. Tell me what you're doing in St. Louis, what you have plans for. All right. Thank you, Missy. I'm a licensed funeral <laughs> realtor and candidate for, oh, look at you, Mr. Earl. You, <laughs> wow. I mean, you, I ain't gonna even tell you all my accolades. <laughs> you just blew me out the water with that. Well, congratulations on that. And, and I hope you well with that candidate. Um, we, I'll be praying, even though I don't know you, I hope that you're a good person. I'm praying for you to win since you're on this call. And since you're a licensed funeral home director, I know darn well that you understand what you'll do if you get in that area, that you need to be the right man because you know what happened if you ain't the right man in the Congress. <laughs> Joking, but serious. All right, and you're a realtor. All right, so outstanding. So looking to flip properties. Now, if you're a real estate agent, this is this is very shocking um, that, that real estate agents are on the call looking to flip houses and you you don't have a broker that mentoring y'all on that process. That's that's shocking. Um, if if you can't mic up, Miss Pam or Mr. Earl, speak to me about that a little bit more. I need to I want to know more about why why folks in real estate is not helping other folks in real estate as agents. All right, can you hear me? Yes, sir. Yes, okay. sir. Yeah, so Earl Childress, uh, my I just got my realtor license this year, April of this year. Uh, so my broker, uh, he actually is investing into real estate. And so uh, right. what kind of got me interested was he um, he had been in real estate 20 years. The first half he was in commercial uh, and then he was looking to, to get into residential, but he wanted to get his wife into the industry. So what he did was he actually started doing the Burr method and got rental properties. And now his wife is now full time in the brokerage with him. So both of them are full time. And so, um, but I was looking more so to, to actually just flip because uh, we have a couple of four family flats that was, that were received as inheritance. And so uh, my wife and I understand the, the landlord aspect of it, uh, but I'm on the commercial side. And so I start buying funeral homes. Okay. And so, and as I started getting into it, what made me look at getting my realtor's license was that I was tired of paying seven to ten thousand dollars for attorney fees just to do real estate contracts <laughs> so i was like man let me get my license it ain't gonna take me that that much to uh <laughs> to to learn this so i can actually don't have to pay those attorney fees so that's really what kind of sparked the interest of um getting into the realtor part and so then i got into that and then start using my my clientele and people just start wanting to get contracts to buy houses and then they got a couple of properties but um i was more so looking at some of the deals like okay uh, the first contract that I, I put on for a buyer, um, it was a realtor who was the listing agent who actually purchased a property. The house got burned out. He got it for like 20000 went in, did remodeling, laid it out. It looks beautiful, almost like a brand new home. Only way you can tell is the outside. Is, it's not brand new. But when you walk in, it's like breathtaking. And then uh, so as soon as I saw it, it wasn't even on the MLS. I saw it coming soon. And the first day it hit. I took my clients there. They were the first ones through the door and yep. they put the contract on it like right away. And then, so from there, that's kind of like, Hey, wait a minute, let me look at this. Cause I was talking to the seller. I was like, man, you did what? And for that particular pro <laughs> property, he was somewhere looking to make about a hundred thousand dollars off of it. Absolutely. I was, I was like, wait a minute, hold up. So that's what kind of started it. And then I started seeing other properties that I started putting contracts on for buyers and it was, they were flipping the properties. And then I said, man, you know what? I just need to kind of learn it. And I was talking to my broker about it. He said, well, I can tell you how to do it to, to rent. But, you know, uh, but if you're going to do it to like, you know, for your side hustle to flip it, he said, you probably want to get into the renovation and start learning the things about the cost and things of that nature. And so that's what kind of got me out. Just start looking at the different groups out here. Say, who can I network with? See what's going on? Who's in the area? What can happen? You know, what can we do to make it happen and, and uh, to help people in the process? Hope so that answers your question. 
you're in the right place. I mean, I, I, I'm surprised. I'm surprised my brother, Coach Joe, did not mic up. This dude fix and flip. Uh, I don't want to say a number and be wrong, but I know it's way over, way over 20 houses. Um, that's how he started the business. He he was professionally trained on how to do it. Uh, when Flip Your House was going on, he was traveling around with the people that were doing that stuff, and he got trained for free uh, because he was already working with them. And then he took that 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 initiative and he started doing it on his own. And this guy went into Louisiana, where I lived at in Freeport area, and he started buying houses all over, and everybody knew his name before you know it. And then all of a sudden, his frat brother got him across my table and said, "Hey, this guy loved." real estate just as much as you love real estate and we've been brothers ever since so 2016 changed both of our lives and since 2016 me and joe have been working together in friendly competition to make more money <laughs> to make more money in real estate um so mr earl i think that the fix and flip i would normally tell folks don't do it, but with the background that you just gave me, I think that that's a beautiful thing for you because you're going to make so much more money. And uh, uh, we, well, hold on, do not disturb, turn it on. All right, so you will make a lot of money um, based off of the 20% that you have to pay Uncle Sam. But every fix and flip that you do, you're going to do a, a, you know, a capital tax, right? A per capita tax of 20% and Uncle Sam going to get that. But by you having several funeral homes, by you, you know, running for, you know, the, the, the office you're running and by you being a real estate agent, you need some tax breaks. So those tax that you'll be paying Uncle Sam will help you to keep the money that you're making in the other transactions. Does that make sense? It makes a lot of sense. Uh, I, my wife, she actually <laughs> worked for the IRS, so she's a tax specialist. <laughs> so. <laughs> So did I hey, actually did I say something wrong? Because you know what, my girlfriend she worked for the Census Bureau and she was a tax, she was an auditor for the uh, IRS too as well. And um, I, and I run all my business by her because she know what she know the taxes. <laughs> yes, sir. But, but definitely run it by her because um, th what I'm what I'm sharing with everybody on the call that's still listening is that sometimes we don't have to do real estate just to make money right now. We do real estate for tax reasons. Um, by me being active duty military, I make a pretty good check without real, without real estate. But because I do the Burr method over and over again, then that actually put me in a tax bracket. Uh, like if I'm making this money with real estate, let's say I'm making this money on my job, $100,000, but I fit, spent $60,000 on a, on a property to refinance it, I mean, to, to fix it, to rehab it. So if I spent 60,000 right here and I made a hundred grand on my personal job, then once you depreciate everything and once you deduct that, I only need a $40,000 tax break. So why Donald Trump don't wanna tell everybody how much money he paid in taxes? Because if he buying all these, build, these commercial buildings and he buying them at this dollar amount and he's depreciating everything, then and then he's renting out stuff and he's making money over here. But the amount he rent out, the income he making, the amount he's keep investing, don't quite add up in a tax bracket thing. So he always don't have to pay, you know, don't have to pay too much taxes. So that's or no taxes. I mean, if he's really good, you pay no taxes. If you kind of good, you pay a little bit of taxes. So sorry, I have to hop off. Well, Mr. Trudis, get on my schedule. Get on my schedule, brother. Thank you. Thank you for micing up. All right. Any other questions? I, I mean, this has been a dynamic night. I, I've enjoyed all of this. This has been beautiful. All right. Who else? Who else? Who else? Who else have any questions? Please mic up so we can answer. Them. All right, Michelle, we haven't picked on you. I haven't picked on you, Miss Davis. All right, brother, I've talked a long night when I thought I wasn't going to have internet. <laughs> so, Coach Joe, I, I think I talked enough. That's my closing words, brother. Whatever you got, man, it's on you. Probably be on the phone with a deal. <laughs> coach, get off the phone. Tell them folks to hold on. <laughs> hey, I'm here, Coach. All, All right, right go ahead, brother. No, no, man. Everything you shared, man, it's, uh, you, you know, hey, the – the time is now, you know, the time is definitely now to, you know, start to invest in yourself, just start, you know, educating yourself, get more knowledgeable. You know, we know that, you know, YouTube University does exist. 
But the one thing YouTube University, you, you know, fails to gives us is the opportunity to actually have dialogue, right? So, you know, with dialogue, that's, you know, where things are, agreements are made, uh, things are truly accomplished and achieved. And so, and, and that's what we want to, you know, our ultimate goal with everyone we're working with and speaking with is, you know, our hopes is to have the, the appropriate amount of dialogue with them to where they're taking the, you know, appropriate action and achieving, you know, the desired, uh, you know, results that, you know, the goals that they're looking for. So, you, you know, that's our thing here. You know, that's our motto. We want to work with you guys and we want you guys to work with us. You know, in many cases, you know, we are buyers. So you guys find opportunities, you know, hey, look, we may buy them, um, it, you know, and, and we're also sellers. You guys find opportunity. We may JV and, you know, and, and, and help sell to another buyer. So the options are there. The opportunities are there. It's just all about finding out the best way of working together. And the only way we can do that is if we, you know, continue to have the appropriate amount of dialogue to find out the best way to serve uh, each other. So coach, man, I, I, <clears throat> again, I appreciate, you know, you and your due diligence and your consistency with, uh, you know, reaching out and, and helping spread the word and, uh, you, you know, continue to take the lead, especially when, whenever I'm out traveling the way I am. It, this is not easy, but it's definitely rewarding. I'll, I'll repeat that. This is not easy, but it's definitely rewarding. So I, I appreciate all you guys uh, this evening, Coach. And, you know, hey, look, those are my my parting words there, Coach. And, you know, anything else that you would like to add, you know, please do so, my brother. I appreciate you. Now, man, I ain't got nothing to add, brother. I appreciate it. Anybody else got anything before we close? That's it. Peace, brother. Awesome, awesome. Talk. All right, guys, take care. Thank you, guys. You take care as well. Absolutely. Thank you.